Hey everybody, Matt Cuts here, ready to answer another question you've got about how Google Search works. We've got a really interesting one today. It's from San Francisco, California. Can you provide more details on how Google uses human raters as part of their algorithm? Great question. I'm going to try to narrow it down a little bit first. So by human raters, I assume you mean people who are paid by Google. That is, you're not talking about people who are blocking results in the Google search results or using the Chrome extension to block things. You're actually talking about people who are rating uh, results. I'm also going to assume that you don't mean people doing web spam. So I've made other videos that talks about how Google takes action and is willing to take manual action on web spam. Um, but you're talking about raters. You use the word raters. So let me drill down on that a little bit. Raters are really not used to influence Google's rankings directly. So let's, let's walk through exactly how they are used. I'm not a member of the search quality evaluation team. I work on web spam, but I can basically paraphrase the process because that's where the human raters come into play. Suppose an engineer has a new idea. They're thinking, oh, uh, I can score these names differently if I reverse their order because in Hungarian and, and Japanese, that's the sort of thing where that can improve search quality. What you would do is we have rated a large quantity of URLs, and we've said, this is really good, uh, this is bad, this URL is spam. So there are hundreds of raters who are paid to, given a URL, say, is this you know, good stuff? Is this bad stuff? Is it spam? How useful is it? Those sorts of things. You know, Is it uh, really, really just essential? All those kinds of things. We also. Uh, so once you've gotten all those ratings, your engineer has an idea. He says, OK, I'm going to change the algorithm. He changes the algorithm and does a test on his machine or here at uh, the internal corporate network. And then you can run a whole bunch of different queries. And you can say, OK, what results change? And you take the results that change, and you take the ratings for those results, and then you say, overall, do the, return, the, do the results that are returned tend to be better? Right? They're the sort of things that uh, people rated a little bit higher rather than a little bit lower. And if so, then that's a good sign, right? You're on the right path. It doesn't mean that it's perfect, like you, you know, raters might miss some spam or raters might not notice some things. But in general, you would hope that if an algorithm makes a new site come up, then that new site would tend to be higher rated than the previous site that came up. So imagine that everything looks good. It looks like it's a pretty useful idea. Then the engineer, instead of just doing some internal testing, is ready to go through sort of a, a launch evaluation where they say, how useful is this? And what they can do is they can generate what's called a side-by-side. -side. And the side-by-side -side is exactly what it sounds like. It's a blind taste test. So over here on the left-hand side, you'd have one set of search results. And on the right-hand side, you'd have a completely different set of search results. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And if you're a, a raider, that is a human raider, you would be presented with a query and a set of search results. And given the query, what you do is you say, I prefer the left side or I prefer the right side. And ideally, you give some comments like, oh, yeah, number two here is spam or, or number four here was really, really useful. Now, the human raider doesn't know which side is which, which side is the old algorithm, and which side is the new test algorithm. So it's a, it's a truly blind taste test. And what you do is you take that back and you look at the stuff that tends to be uh, rated as much better with the new algorithm or much worse with the new algorithm. Because if it's about the same, then that doesn't give you as much information. So you look at the outliers and you say, OK, do you tend to lose navigational home pages or you know under this query set do things get much worse and then you can look at the rater comments and you can see you know could they tell that things were getting better if things look pretty good then we can send it out for what's known as a sort of a live experiment and that's basically taking a small percentage of users and when they come to Google you give them the new search results and then you look and you say, OK, do people tend to click on the, the new search results a little bit more often? Do they seem to like it better according to the different ways that we try to measure that? And if they do, then that's also a good sign. Now, people can get it wrong. For example, raters and uh, you know, just regular users don't always recognize spam. So you could launch some change that got rid of a whole bunch of spam 
and people might still think that that was not as good. So it's no substitute for the intuition and the experience that the search engine uh, engineers have, but we do take the evaluation and the results of both the human readers as well as the, the analysts who evaluate those results very, very seriously. And we want to make sure that we're launching a change that's overall a big improvement, or ideally at least an improvement for users. So as you can see here, if I rate this left or right as better, that doesn't change the algorithm. Really, the human raters that are used within the evaluation group are used to say, we think this would be better or we think this would be worse. But those ratings don't directly affect the search engine results. So very good question. I'm glad you asked it. I'm glad it gave me an opportunity to talk about how we think about when you want to launch a search change, how do you tell if it's really an improvement? How do you tell if you've missed anything? Can you evaluate it in different languages and see whether it looks better across all those different languages? So those are the kinds of things that we think about. But to just dispel the misconception that there are a group of raters and when they rate something as bad, you know, the, uh, you know, if you don't think that this result is as useful, then it starts to drop in the rankings, that doesn't happen. Uh, the only time that that sort of thing happens is when we're taking action on, on web spam, and that's a completely different group. And we've talked a little bit about those, and we could cover those in a different video. But I hope that helps. I hope that explains a little bit about how we think about whether to launch a search change or not, and sort of explains when human raters are used and what they're used for and how their expertise helps us make Google search results better. Thanks very much.